Paul! Michelle! Michelle, where are you? Paul, quickly! Matt! Matt! Come on, Come on quickly! Are you prepared? Stand fast. The high security shelter. Hello. Anybody at home? We bring joyous news. Of our Lord Jesus. <laughs> Stand fast. The only sure protection against Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> And as you probably realised, this is our special Albanian edition. <laughs> and to just put you in the mood, I like to do an Albanian joke. There are these two Albanian mule drivers uh, walking along the street. One says to the other, what's the difference between Cliff Richard and the England football team? Well, at least Cliff scores once every 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all the Albanian jokes for now. Um, <laughs> This week is also the week in which uh, President Ronald Reagan is visiting our shores, and I think I speak for everyone here when I say how honoured we are Rory, to have Rory, such a great Rory, space. Rory, 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 Rory! Hold on a minute. What? what? You're talking about you think you speak for everyone here about Ronald Reagan. You don't know how this, these people think. You don't know that. You haven't asked them. Have you? Well, You're being them. totally biased. Ask them. All right, ask them. I will. Hands up, all those of you who want to be blown to pieces in your beds by a geriatric maniac. <laughs> See, nobody, not oh, one. Oh, come on, no, that's not fair. That's a loaded question. Look, if you're going to do it, do it properly, all right. All those of you who are against American cruise missiles in this country, shout out, <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 please, please. Um, all those who support the butcher Reagan, <laughs> stand on your chairs, pull your trousers down and unwiggle your bottoms. <laughs> See, not one, not one. Listen, um, all those who are against Reagan pretend to be a one-legged chicken singing Beethoven's Choral Symphony. <laughs> no, not very many, Tony, I'm afraid. You're so apathetic. So, obviously, everyone here wants to join with us on Who Dares Wins for our special tribute to the great, great man. <laughs> yeah! You have to re rearrange your over to rearrange and... Well, we're very thrilled this evening to have with us in the studio Ronald Reagan's closest living relative, and he's come all the way from Ireland to be with us. Please welcome Mr. Billy Reagan. Hi. Billy, welcome. <laughs> yes. Well, well, we'll be talking to Billy later about the problems of, of coping with hereditary diseases. But now, let's salute Ronald Reagan. Yeah, 
very good, is it? You're... Well, at great expense this week, we've flown Philip Pope over to New York, and I think we can now talk to him via satellite. Hello, hello, Philip? Is he there? Philip, hello! Uh, can you hear me? Yes, uh, loud and clear, Julia. <laughs> yes. Well, I've been having a marvellous time over here in uh, old New York. Uh, yesterday I saw the Bronx with all its colour, and of course it's Seamia's side, in fact I had to avoid a couple of drug pushes, and then I saw the uh, Empire State Building, and then a pink hippopotamus doing uh, press-up. And uh, looking down on old Broadway, I can see... Uh... <laughs> uh... Julia, I can... Well, thank you, Phil. Um, well, of course, as they say, behind every great man there's a woman. And what better way to understand a woman than to find out what she keeps in her handbag? Well, as a Who Dares exclusive, we have managed to steal the handbag of the First Lady of the United States of America. Yes, Nancy Reagan. And we've got it right here. So, let's have a look, shall we? Uh, now, there's a very important-looking memo here, which reads that uh, you are... Nancy Reagan. <laughs> There's, uh, what else? Oh, some spoons. What do they sound about here? Uh, property of Buckingham Palace. <laughs> it's obviously a present. Uh, oh, we've got that. We've got the makeup bag. Makeup bag. What's inside? <laughs> Possibly not. Uh, and uh, what else? Oh! This looks like uh... <laughs> I think it must be a personal cruise missile or something. <laughs> um, Rory! So let's all put our hands together as we welcome President... Following item is issued by the Sex Advisory Service. I'm sorry. It's never happened to me before. It, I just, uh, it's okay. I don't know what. Really, listen, it's, it's it's no problem. Really. Thank you. It really doesn't matter to me at all. Thank you. Yes, ladies, be prepared for those first-night nerves. Always pack a spare. <laughs> this amazing machine... <laughs> ..is a brain scanner. <laughs> specially designed to translate electronic impulses from the living, thinking brain. Now, what is really fascinating is that no two brain rhythms are exactly the same. Excuse me, sir, would you mind helping me to demonstrate this? <coughs> Perfectly famous. Now... <laughs> Funny shaped head. Now, <laughs> now, what this gentleman is thinking here is translated into visual pattern. <laughs> a loose connection. That's all right. Be okay in a second. Yeah, is translated into visual patterns on this monitor here. <laughs> you don't sell insurance, do you? Uh, I mean, you're not a disc jockey or a member of the Spencer family. I... <laughs> you're not Gloria Honeyford in drag? <laughs> ah! It is! It's Gloria Honeyford in drag! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for Gloria Honeyford! Just take the shorthand. Yeah, sorry. Oh, Lord, guide thy humble servant that he might pass on thy holy commandments to thy people on earth. Hmm? Contraception. Contraception. The day after pill, banned. 
Band. Yeah. The day before peel, band. band. Doing it with your underpants on, <laughs> band. The Kama Sutra, Kama oh. Sutra. Here we go. Positions number 93, 1746 B. Oh. <laughs> and 108. All banned. Well, that just leaves position number one. And number one, oh, yes. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> Tongues in the ear. Banned. Watching female gymnasts. Banned. Do you know what is yodeling in the canyon? <laughs> yeah. You can't do it. Oh. Huh? Playing the pink oboe. He's sex man. <laughs> Sending the maid down for more mayonnaise. He's winding us up. That's never in the Bible. Uh, it's in St. Paul's letter to the gynecologist. <laughs> I don't think we ever got that one. <laughs> Bloody post office. <laughs> um, Your Holiness. While he's there, um, can you ask him who shot Bobby Ewing? Please! Oh, sorry. He's not sure, but his money's on Cliff Barnes. Yes, officer. Something wrong. Yes, yeah, sir. Just a spot check. Hey. Short sure vehicle, sir. Certainly. And uh, I, I haven't been drinking. Jolly good, sir. Uh, tell me, uh, do you have a cassette machine fitted to the vehicle? Yes. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, well, if that's all, I'll. Not uh... quite, sir. May I ask which cassettes exactly you carry for the purpose of playing in this machine? Hmm. Yes, certainly. Here we are. Shall kick it. Let's see. Uh, <coughs> madness. Are you? Your rhythmics. Elvis Costello. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, sir. Paul McCartney and Wings. It's an old one. I'd meant to throw it away. Yes, sir. Allow me. Thank you. Paul Young, Joan Armour Trading. Yep. All seems to be in order, sir. Thank you very much. You'll overlook the. Paul McCartney? Yeah. Anyone can make a mistake, can't they, sir? Right. Well, thank you. OK. Um, thanks. <sighs> that is all the cassette, isn't it, sir? Oh, yes, that's all. Yes, indeed. That's, that's the lot. So you wouldn't mind uh, opening up the glove compartment, then, would you, sir? Can't is stuck. Hello, me, sir. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear. Good Lord, look at them. Well, let's just do that, shall we, sir? Look at them. Here we go. Electric light orchestra. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, a hitchhiker must have left. Oh, that really is. Pink Floyd, David Soul, Lulu. Yeah. Only M. Pickety Witch. <laughs> you sick bastard. Donovan. <laughs> Hang on. Kids from Fame. You just planted that. Fleetwood Mac, King Crimson. Right, Fleetwood Mac, that's it, mate. What's your name? Oh, you yes, can't do me for Fleetwood Mac. What do you mean? It's, well, it's, it's on the list. You're going to get done for it. It's the early stuff. It's Actually, it's oh, right. No, it is the early it's stuff. Got, it's got... Yeah, it's yeah, so OK. He's playing it. Look, he's got Fleetwood Mac. I don't care. 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 Fleetwood Mac, sir. Book him. Right, thanks, sir. OK, mate. Have you checked the cassettes in your car lately? Don't be caught out like our friend here. It's just not worth it. All right.
Thanks very much. Well, Jimmy's got a very interesting little chappy for us to meet. He's this little cat, Epsom. Mm. And there's something absolutely fascinating about Epsom. Is that not so, Jimmy? That's right. Epsom can, in fact, talk. He's a, a <laughs> talking cat. He's a, yeah, he's a talking cat, yeah. That's amazing, yeah. Oh, you mean he can just sort of say words like... Um, Meow. Words that sound like... No, 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 he, he can speak perfectly well-formed English. Amazing. Yeah. But apart from that, he's just a normal cat. He just, yeah, he's a perfectly normal cat. Um, I caught him in the shed the other day, mm. and uh, he was there just teasing a mouse, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Playing with it. No, he's teasing it. <laughs> <laughs> he was saying things like, What's the one like there? <laughs> you know. And I bet you mice are very by lovers, that sort of thing, you know. And what other sort of things does it say? Well... <laughs> I came in the other night and uh, he leapt on my shoulder, mm -hmm. as he does, and he said to me, Oi, Jimmy, I've done some jobbies around the house. <laughs> and I'm not telling you where. That's brilliant. Yeah. Did you find them? No, no, no. no. <laughs> you see, the funny thing was, he hadn't done jobbies around the house. He was just taking the piss out of me. That's brilliant. <laughs> Does he uh, play the fool a lot? No, he's played the fool once to Alan Howard's King Lear. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure the audience, <laughs> sure the audience here are dying to hear Epsom say something. So, what's he going to say for us tonight, Jim? Well, unfortunately, Rory, he isn't going to say anything at all. Oh. Because, uh, well, he's actually asked me to give you this note of apology. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Dear Rory, <clears throat> I'm sorry I won't be able to say anything on the show tonight. But unfortunately, I've just joined an order of Trappist monks. <laughs> with, uh, with strict vows of silence. Love, Epsom the cat. P.S. Start the commercial break. Mm. He spelt commercial wrong. But he's not that clever, he said. <laughs> What we're going to do is we're going to play you an extract from a very serious, sad, touching drama. And to enhance your enjoyment of it, we're going to play over the top of it the sound of people being really bloody miserable. Yeah. <laughs> Recorded the uh, England's last home game. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, with canned misery, the last petals of spring. <laughs> Don't cry, Mary Sue. Look at all the little kiddies playing cowboys and Indians out in the fields. Oh. You're so brave, Jake. Anyhow, you'll be better soon. Mm. Promise you won't lie to me anymore, Mary Sue. Promise. I promise, Jake. I've only a few months left to live, haven't I? Oh, no, Jake. Only three days, actually. Oh, my God. At least there's still little Jakey Jr. Oh, no. Little Jakey Jr. Dead? How, Mercy? Tell me how. I remember him that morning, Jake. He was playing with the little ducklings bobbing in the sun. Oh. Mommy, he said, why don't ducks leak? Oh. Then what did he say? Well, not a lot. That's when the truck hit him. <laughs> Jumped clean into the duck pond. Oh, gosh. Isn't the world a cruel place? think he could be out there with those little kiddies playing cowboys and Indians. I'm so sorry, Jake. Mary Sue, do one last thing for me before I go. Will you bring me my little puppy? Will you bring Sniffy here? Oh. Actually, Jake, I have. <laughs> he was in Grandpappy's house when the fire started. Fire? <laughs> what fire? Where are Grandmammy and Grandpappy? <laughs> oh, no. It's as if all the petals from the flower of life have fallen off. At least I still got you. You're my last petal. <laughs>
thank you. Now it's time for our celebrity guest spot. Now, we were lucky enough last week to have in our studio a Mr. Harry Stevenson, who was a postman from Aylesbury, but <laughs> who was, in fact, an incredible Frankie Howard look-alike. You can see that. Brilliant. <laughs> In fact, he was so convincing that a lot of people actually wrote in to ask, you know, whether or not it was really Frankie Howard. Of course it wasn't. Anyway, we, it was so popular, we thought we'd uh, do another look-alike this week. So I could introduce, you, uh, introduce him to you as Sylvester Rocky Stallone, but he is, in fact, just Philip Hadley, a self-employed potter from Suffolk. So, ladies and gentlemen, will you welcome, please, the amazing Sylvester Stallone look-alike, Philip Hadley. <laughs> Really great having you on the show, Philip. Thank, thanks for asking me. <laughs> Isn't that brilliant? I mean, ladies and gentlemen, honestly, this, I've, I've been working with him all day, and even then when he came on, I thought, oh, God, it's the real thing again. I mean, <laughs> oh, oh, it's un uncanny. Uh, let's, have, let's have a look at the likeness close up, can we, on the monitor? <laughs> hey, look at that. Look at that. That is spooky. Thrilled, Phil. Thrilled to have you on the show. Well, I'm flattered to be asked. <laughs> and the voice as well. The voice. That's what's amazing. And you're not American, are you? Uh, no, I'm from Basingstoke. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Honestly, the, the scenes in the foyer today, we walked through, me and Phil, and there were women fainting and girls screaming and flash bobs going. It was incredible. Do people stop you in the street a lot? Uh, yeah, yes, a man stopped me in the street the other day. Brilliant to ask me the way to the post office. <laughs> yeah, to ask me the way to the post office. <laughs> that voice is incredible. <laughs> you, must, you must do very well with women, Phil. I suppose you're always fighting them off, are you? Well, not really. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> hey, isn't that the most brilliant Sylvester State? It's brilliant, isn't it? Don't you think so? Is, do you go to the cinema a lot? Not a lot. Don't you? Do you go to the cinema a lot? Mm. You? Which cinema do you go to? The Roxy. Oh, where's that? You don't? Yeah. I go there. When was the last time you were there? Oh, about six months ago. It's you, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> You're him. <laughs> the bloke that flobbed over the balcony. <laughs> see, I'm sitting there watching uh, one of the Rocky films, and suddenly, you know, as, as you do, and suddenly I thought someone's pissing over the balcony. <laughs> Jesus. It's my ice cream. I'm colored ice cream. <laughs> anyway. I don't believe this. <laughs> the, can you get close up on that, Michael? That, that is. <laughs> look at the camera. Which one are we on? Martin? Look at that. What a likeness. To who? What, what's your name? Caroline. Caroline what? Gruber. Caroline Gruber. Isn't that amazing? We're looking at Groucho Marx. <laughs> <laughs> do, us a, do us a Groucho Marx bag. <laughs> I can't! <laughs> That's brilliant. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round, please, of Caroline Gruber, the amazing Groucho Marx! <laughs> Where are we now? I can't tell. I think, I think we're in the antenatal clinic again. Oh. Yeah. Well, not long now, according to the consultant. What's not long now? Birth. Oh, shame. It's cosy in here. Yeah. Yeah, it's a sort of place, you know, I wouldn't mind coming back to again and again, really, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Whoop, whoop. The consultant wants someone to have a listen. <laughs> it's a student. I got it. Tie a yellow ribbon round me, old old Chris. I got the student saying, I could hear a chorus of tie a ribbon. Hang on, hang on. The consultants having a listen. What's the consultant doing now? He's telling the student to lay off the drugs. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's banned him from the pharmacy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, uh, hey. What? Another thing. You know, what? when you go out, yeah. see this cord here? Yeah. Wrap it round your neck. You'll yeah. turn blue and it scares the shit out of them. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. <laughs> hmm. Oh. 
Uh, who goes first? Me. Why? I'm a different sex. What sex are you then? I'm oppressor, you're oppressed. Oh. What does that entail? Well, a lot of washing up for you, basically. <laughs> you see, biologically, you're better equipped than me. You've got these, these bumps at the front that stop the water splashing in your face, don't you? That's a wonderful thing, nature. Oh, it's marvellous. Yeah. Marvellous. Hey. Yeah? It was here again last night. <laughs> What? It. You know. What do you mean, it? It, it. Oh, that. Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen that for a while. You won't see it again in a hurry either. Oh, yeah, why is that? I bit it. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard you talk about D Day. <laughs> Shut up. Mm, mm. God's sake. Mm, mm. England are 44 for six. Six what? I've no idea. <laughs> Apparently, it's a national disaster. There's been a lot of slashing outside the off stump. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right. It's Labour, it's Labour. Here we go, here we go. No, 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 no it's cramped. I've got. You're on my cord, get off it! Well, if you, so... if you kept to your side of the sack, it wouldn't happen, would it? Go... Shut up, you're so immature. I'm only 20 seconds more immature than you are. Hang on. What's that? Can, can, can you smell burning? I don't believe it. The old cow's having a sly fag, isn't she? Oi! 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 What about the unborn innocents? Give it a kick! Never liked her. No. Yeah. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I think I can hear it. She's she's choosing our names. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to be called. I'm going to be called. Uh, no, it doesn't matter. Probably. Uh, no, no. No, she'll probably change her mind. No, go on. No, it's all right. Go on, tell me. Tarquin. <laughs> Tarquin. Yeah, Tarquin. <laughs> Brother of Petunia. <laughs> Yeah, she'll probably change, change her mind. mind, yes. <laughs> Hang on. Daddy's home. Oh, he's a grumpy bastard. Yeah. <laughs> They're rowing. Mm. She's going to leave him when we're 17, apparently. 17 what? No idea. He says, bloody good job. Yeah. He says she's not interested in it anymore. And he says he finds it uncomfortable. Finds what uncomfortable? Says it feels as though something's biting him. <laughs> Yeah, give it a kick. Oi! Our love was just like poetry, music out of time. It turned into a tragedy, cause our lives would never rhyme. I've seen things, I've seen good, I've seen bad, I've seen happy, I've seen unhappy. <laughs> I've seen things, I've seen high, I've seen low, I've seen fast, I've seen sluggish. I remember a girl, the prettiest of my life. The first time that I saw her, I knew she'd be my white bait. We shared a glass of wine after we made love. She put her hand in mine and it fit just like a shoe. <laughs> but the winter knows no pity when you're lonely in the city. And although the girls are pretty, the hotel rooms are shameful <laughs> and shitty. <laughs> I've tried to be a good man wherever I did roam. I hope that when I reach the end, I'll go 
to heaven abode. One of the fascinating aspects of human physiology is that we aren't alone. Sorry. Tony, sorry. What? I'm not going to interrupt you this week at all, right? Yeah? In your bit. Thank you. I just want to say, I think it's terribly interesting, this bit. Thank terribly, you. terribly interesting. I'll just go and finish me change. Sure. Hosts of tiny, exquisite bacteria inhabit every square centimetre of us. How long will you be, mate? It's going to be long? About two or three minutes. Oh, God, I'll hang around. And, for example, over 80 different types of tiered... Look, what are you doing? No, no, you, honestly, you just carry on. I'm, I'm all right here. <laughs> Over 80 different types of teardrop shapes. What? Come on! Yeah, Could I be a devil and just borrow, borrow the program for two seconds? All right, just two seconds. You're amazing. Are there any, any Americans in the audience tonight? Yeah. There are. <laughs> Welcome to our country. And what the hell do you think you're playing at? <laughs> hmm? You're going to re-elect Ronald Reagan, aren't you? Don't, don't, don't shake your head. You are, you are. Can we have a camera on this guy? Can we just show him for the kind of person he is, please? Can we just... Can we? <laughs> you, don't, you don't care, do you, anymore? Hey? You've got no compassion? No sense of history? Of course, it will be you that gets it first, will it? It'll be us! In Europe! Oh, sod old Europe, yeah. I mean, Paris will go, Rome, Swansea. <laughs> hmm? I mean, what about those poor sods who were working their balls off during the Renaissance, on their backs, underneath ceilings, turf dripping going up the nostrils? Hmm? Tough titty, Leonardo. Ronnie's got itchy finger. <laughs> what about the, the millions of suffering and casualties and, and, all the, and all that deprivation? And furthermore, I've just bought a new house. <laughs> hmm? Six months it take me to get the house right. Put the damp course in it. I got all, all tile throughout. Builders traipsing in and out. Double glazing. And now, after 15,000 Ronald Reagan's gonna zap it. But when you go back to America and you bump into Ronnie, just tell him, will you? He didn't have to go to the hell of exchanging contracts. <laughs> and living, living in a building site for six months. Hey, Ronnie, if you're listening, mate, when you get a bit of itchy finger, just spare a thought for the first time buyer. All right? <laughs> Sorry, Tom. One of the most fascinating aspects of human physiology is that we aren't alone. How many of us realise that, for example, the slight thickening on our finger and toenails and the cheesy substance underneath <laughs> is the result of an ingenious parasitic fungus living on the surface of our bodies? <laughs> Sister psychosis, another intriguing parasite, is caused by an enterprising snail which lays its eggs in water. These eggs surreptitiously penetrate the sole of the human foot, float around the bloodstream and eventually, when they reach the gut, they hatch out into tiny insidious worms which crawl through the lungs, <coughs> up the bronchi and, and into the throat. And of course simply washing doesn't get rid of them, especially when you think that, for instance, a bar of soap in a public wash basin is literally covered with swarms of millions of killer germs. And You know those uh, electric hand dryers? Well, the inside is absolutely infested with vicious bacteria and as soon as you press the button they zoom out out of your hands and into your pores at about a thousand miles an hour. Swimming pools, Christ! But, I mean, by all means, paddle in the small disinfectant foot bath, but that large pool of blue urine next to it, forget it! <laughs> and whatever you do, never, never use a public lavatory! But if you're absolutely forced to, for God's sake, wash your ears when you've had them pressed up against the side of the cubicle. And whichever eye's been in contact with that hole just above the toilet roll holder, give it a really good wash, because... Um... <laughs> um <laughs> sorry, I... I've been feeling a bit, uh, bit um, I've got a, a bit of a virus, I think. Uh, do, do you want to take a break or something?
Mrs. Bentley? Yes. <laughs> hello, hello. Hello. I'm your surgeon. Now, which leg is it? Sorry. <laughs> Something up? Um, you just don't look like a surgeon. Oh, come on, this was clean on yesterday. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm terribly, terribly sorry. It's just you don't look like an, an, a normal surgeon. Um, an outside contractor. Oh. <laughs> what? You know, like the laundry and the meals and the uh, rubbish collection. But your hands, they're filthy. Yeah, well, I've just finished the rubbish collection, haven't I? <laughs> now, no, I come I on, love. I've got you, two colostomies and a bypass to do this afternoon. <laughs> and I've got a dance match tonight. Coronary bypass? No, the A46 ring road. I've got the contract <laughs> for the uh, tarmac. Now, let's have a listen to the old ticker, shall we? I like this bit. Uh, ex excuse me, don't you think you ought to be using a stethoscope? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I left it in the van. Now, if you just <laughs> shove your old chest up a bit. I'm, I'm sorry, but actually, I don't think you're properly qualified. <laughs> excuse me? I went to a very fine school. I learnt a lot. Uh, guys, I suppose. Yeah. And women. <laughs> and do both. We all can. Oh? Yeah, me, George, Herbert, and the apprentice. Oh, that reminds me. Hey, Herbert! You started that post mortem yet? Yeah, just a minute. All right, we'll make sure he's dead first, will you, this time? It's ever so embarrassing. <laughs> oh, there's George, our sparks, doing the ECTs down psychiatric. <laughs> now, listen. Do you want gas? Because I've got the apprentice outside. Is he a proper anaesthetist? He's not a proper apprentice, to tell you the truth. Uh, he's, uh, we got him on a yacht scheme, you know. Um, let's have a look at this uh, leg. Well, actually, actually, it's appendicitis. Yeah, I know, but left or right? Look, I'm sorry, actually. Suddenly I'm feeling so much better. I think I'm going to go... Home. No, come on, love. Uh, let's not be hasty. Uh, I'll do whatever's wrong with your leg and change your kidneys and give you some nice double glazing. Oh, that's very, very, very kind of you, but actually no... Hundred pound, in the end, no questions asked. <coughs> Sorry, have we stopped? Yeah, um, I'm sorry to interrupt the show uh, at this point, uh, but we've just been informed we, haven't, we are, in fact, highly honoured, in fact, to have a very special guest. Will you give a, a very British welcome to the 40th President of the United States, Mr Ronald Reagan? <laughs> We got anybody here of Eastern European extraction? Uh, Mr. President, uh, uh, hold it. <laughs> okay, he's clean. <clears throat> if I could uh, just get, to, I want to speak to the president. Nobody goes near the president. Well, how am I supposed to interview him? You ask me the question, I pass it back to him. <laughs> okay, uh, if you could just say to the president, uh, welcome to Britain. Okay. <laughs> President says, thank you, but he's already got one. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, if you could ask uh, the President if he thinks the present round of talks with Mrs. Thatcher will be fruitful. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> President says, each strand is individually attached with glue. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I was just wondering if we can't actually speak to the uh, president direct, if we could actually uh, possibly see him on camera. That, Is that be that, the possible? president commands a negative visibility status at this time. <laughs> Sorry? Your audience hasn't been cleared by security. Oh, them. Oh, they're fairly harmless, don't they? Yeah. Remember. How about that guy in the back row? You see third from the left? Oh, yeah. Yeah, looks What's like wrong a, with you? Looks like a Catholic to me. <laughs> Subversive. Could well be carrying a concealed weapon. Look, can the uh, gentleman on his right-hand side, could you please frisk him? In fact, while we're there, could, could, could everybody in the audience frisk the person on their leg? <laughs> Go on. Frisk the person. Come on. Between the legs. Come on, come on. Between the legs. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay. Okay. We are now prepared to let you see the president. Thank you very much. Okay, guys. Oh, God! Where's he gone now? Where is he? Ronnie. Ronnie. He's here this morning. Hey, I saw him. Ronnie. Hey, Ronnie. Ronnie. Ron. 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 Hey, come on, boy. Hey, Ronnie. Ronnie. Well, it's... It's... 
It's competition time now on Who Dares Wind, and it's a chance for one of our studio audience to win this tub of money. <coughs> hey. <laughs> and the, the competition this week is... the Are You Uglier Than Leon Britton contest. <laughs> Now, I know what you're thinking. It's too difficult. No one can win. Well, in fact, sadly, you're right. Uh, we searched high and low throughout our audience, and nobody is, in fact, uglier than Leon Britton. So we're opening up to you at home. If you know, or if you see anybody next week who's uglier than Leon Britton, I just hope you're not eating at the time. Thank you. Remember the first time we came here? Yes. Yes, I do, actually. Everything all right, sir? Mm. More wine, perhaps? It's lovely. Thank you. It's your birthday, wasn't it? That's right, it was. My, my birthday, yes. It was my, uh, my 21st birthday, in fact, mm. it was a, a long, long time ago now. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Your bill, sir. Mm. Mm. Okay, this is on me. No, no, no. no, 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 no hey, on, hey, 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 come on, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, we'll go five ways. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did anyone here have the spare ribs? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll be with you in just one moment. She said she wanted it well done, not rare. <laughs> and uh, some uh, tartar sauce with the halibut on table. Fine, please. None. That is mayonnaise. Six years, actually. Six, Six years, years. Yeah, long, really? long, 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 long time. Well, yeah. well. Well, I've got something to tell you. Look, I've got something I want to tell you. I, I think, think we should... should... Oh, sorry. Get married. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, well, only £35 short. You mean £35 short? OK, now, you had the volleyball, right? You had the steak, you had the spaghetti. Uh, so who had the prawns? I think, I think, I think it was yours, I don't have any prawns. I don't have any prawns. I don't have any prawns. OK, 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 I'll prove it to you, all right? I didn't have any prawns. Excuse me. I think this chicken is a little rare. I'll get you, I'll get you something else, Matt, as soon as I can. Yes, yes, I'll as soon as I can. Give me something else for table four. Oh! <laughs> Could I have a menu, please? Would you, would you like? Would you like some uh, tartar sauce? Or like? Thank you. Look, I'm I'm sorry. Look, I I really I really didn't want to hurt you or anything. It's just. Thank you very much. I'm sure there are plenty more fish in the sea. Yeah, yeah I, I, you, you'll, you'll be all right. Really. Never thought you'd say yes anyway. Singing telegram for the future Mrs Johnson. Love and marriage, love and marriage. They go together like a horse and carriage. Thank you. <laughs> now, now that all right. is an x-ray of your stomach. <laughs> and that's a prawn! That's a prawn, mate! It's a bloody prawn! Excuse me. This is disgusting. Oh, I beg your pardon, ma'am. The fork is dirty. Certainly, I'll get you another one too, like it. Look, I understand. I understand you've every right to be upset. Oh, you're all right, don't worry. Please, don't be strange. I don't think you should take this anyway. I'm falling. <laughs> 
Suzette. Ah, the speciality of the house. I shall uh, flambe it myself. <laughs> Hi there. I could hardly help from watching you all evening, and even in fact, I couldn't take my eyes off you. And I was just wondering if you'd like to come back to my place for a cup of coffee. Thank you. I'd love to. Oh, yeah. Great. <laughs> Bastard! <laughs> I told you I had the prawns! <laughs> Join us for the 107th running of the Mug Punters Handicap Stakes. And as they come round for the last time, the field is bunched, and there goes the housekeeping, followed by Don't Tell the Wife. Then it's hot tip out of I Know the Jockey's Brother and Not Fit to Make Cat Food. Bringing up the rear, it's Oh Bugger, followed by Oh Bugger Bugger, and then I Tell You It's a Fix. And we've had a faller at the first fence, and that was Bruff Scott said it couldn't lose. And as they dash for the line, it's That Git Piggott, That Git Piggott for the upteenth time. And at the line, yes, it's That Git Piggott from Wouldn't You Bloody Well Know It. And in third place, as ever, it's Sod It, I Backed It to Win. And now, back to the studio. On behalf of the Presidential Guard, I'd like to extend this message to our colleagues in the Metropolitan Police Force. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Make it a better place. I want you all to love my neighbor. And that's what I want to talk to you all about right now. Thank you, Jesus. That's okay. You know, there's a lot of worried people in the world. They worry about the bomb. They worry the world is going to end tomorrow. But what I say is, if we all pull together, this world could be good for another two or three years. So I want you all to join hands. Will you do that for me? I want you to join hands in love. And I want you to look at each other and I want you to see how beautiful you all are because the whole world is beautiful. Everybody in it's beautiful. My God, you're beautiful. Excuse me, if you've got a phone where I can contact you, you can maybe meet tomorrow night, okay? Human kindness. I'll come back to you. I want you to turn to that stranger and I want you to say, Hi, lover. Will you say that? Hi, lover. It was easy, it was easy. Now I want you to turn to your neighbor and I want you to give him a little kiss. Will you do that? I said, A little kiss, okay. Now I want you to be real brave for me. I want you to reach out and grab hold of their room parts. You see? Open your flies! Just, just, oh, that's beautiful! Oh, 